Hey guys, so welcome to another design audit and this time we're going to be looking at a landing page design from Anka. I hope I pronounced it correctly. And uh, I'm not going to make a lot of changes here as this is a landing page so uh, it's a little bit more work than a, a mobile app. But I spotted a couple of things that are pretty easy to fix and are going to make it a lot better. Let's start with the header here. So one thing to, to actually make designs like that pop a little bit more is to take out some images from outside those boundaries so they're kind of like be breaking the boundaries and sticking out a little bit. So what I mean is that you can actually take the headphones out over here and make it a little bit more interesting because of that shape sticking out here. So the next thing that we can do here is changing that background a little bit because in general, if we go with a gradient, it's gonna be a little bit nicer to look at. So I'm gonna use the exact same color for both sides of the gradient, but then on one side, I'm gonna switch to HSB and I'm gonna decrease the brightness twice. Okay, so to make the gradient even more interesting, I'm gonna make it diagonal but make sure to, to not exceed the boundaries of the actual box, so just keep it within the box. And it's looking better already. So the next thing probably is the buttons. Yeah, so the thing with the button is that it's a little bit too cramped on the side and the text is not exactly in the center because as you can see, the bounding box is a little bit larger on the bottom. So if you want to have this text precisely in the center, you should probably change the alignment or just decrease the line height. Yeah, so that way we're getting a little bit closer. Okay, but I'm gonna switch it to fixed height and then modify it just so the text is really in the center of the button. And then the thing is that really good buttons have a little bit more space on the sides than on the top and the bottom. So if we can actually increase that size a little bit, uh, it's, gonna look, it's gonna look better. Then changing the font color to white is gonna make it a little bit more visible and we can also change this fill to a gradient to to make it pop a little bit so once again i'm gonna pick the same gradient but i'm gonna pick one of them a little brighter and then just move it to to diagonal but to to be more light on the top than on the bottom but since the text is not really properly visible here, we can actually modify it to, to be the darker shade of our green and then decrease the brightness like a lot. So it's still like a very dark green on that background. And what else can we do here? Yeah, that since it's a button, it's better to have it in a bolder font. So it uh, catches more attention and stands out a little bit more. And generally, if you're just starting out as a designer, I wouldn't recommend having those fancy fonts in your projects and better stick to something a little bit more standard. Yeah, Poppins is a, is a pretty nice font. So it actually makes a little bit more sense visually to, to have a more standard font and things like that. Then the main menu is a little bit too big regarding the font size. So I'm gonna go with 16 because it's really not that important as the headphones here is like the main category that you can see underneath and then the rest is just the about part. But I would move it together with the sign in and modify the sign up button the same way. So changing this frame, the auto layout to like 30. What we can also do is just copy the properties and uh, paste them here and then just decrease the font size again. And that way we'll be able to actually have it make a little bit more sense visually. It's still not properly aligned as you can see. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and right until the point. That's why auto layout is not really that great in many cases. It just kind of breaks some of those things a little bit. The next thing is uh, that if you're doing a logo for a company, it's probably best to use uh, a slightly more uh, a slightly more standing out font. And there's there's no problem with it being 
uh, white as well. But the exposure of this image we can modify to make it a little bit lighter so it sticks out on that background. And this is like a couple of smaller changes in just the header that will make it a little bit nicer visually. And then I'm gonna switch this one to Poppins as well, but I'm gonna make it smaller, so like 32 or maybe 40. I'm going in increments of eight because I think that's the best way to actually work with both fonts and spacings. So we have a couple of, uh, of headphones here with uh, the text in the bottom left. So what, I, what we can do here is to actually figure out the spacing between them at 26. Well, let's just leave it at that. Probably could be something else, but if you put the font at the exact same spot, it's gonna look a little bit better. And as you can see, I'm aligning it to the baselines. So um, it's a little bit different than the alignment to the bounding box, which actually sticks out a little bit more. So yeah, just moving it towards the baseline. And yeah, that's better. So I'm not gonna modify the fonts over here, but you can still play around with it. You can have like a suggested fill for a couple of those, like modify the color a little bit or the transparency to make it different in, in some of the spaces here. And just center align it. Okay, so this is another section where we could actually make it shine a little bit more. So first of all, the title, we can actually use that second font. And uh, decrease the font size a tiny bit and decrease the line height a little bit as well. Okay, so this is uh, one thing, but since the skull candy is actually the company here, we can make this a little bit smaller. So that creates like a natural visual hierarchy of, uh, of these things here that we're looking at. Then the description could actually use a little bit more line height. So I'm just gonna increase this a little bit. And I'm not gonna make it bold, I'm gonna change it to medium. And generally I would go with 24 probably instead of uh, 26, but I'm not gonna modify too much over here. So this is one thing with the headphones, but the main problem with the smaller image on a darker background is that it doesn't really stick that much. So um, I'm just gonna copy the same properties from before, but we're gonna modify this gradient a little bit. So pasting it and then going to the gradient and going to the darker color and actually making it lighter. And now our headphones are a little bit more visible. And what we can also do is actually create an oval uh, right under the headphones and have it just as a solid, change it to white. And then uh, in effects, we can go to blur and uh, blur it a lot, like really a lot. And when you get this uh, blurry image here, we can just paste it, one second. Yeah, we can just paste it under the headphones to make them a little bit more visible. And then this layer could use uh, like an overlay blending mode. They're not that easy to do in code, but they could be achieved by some other means. And maybe it could just be done as uh, like a fixed background if all the headphones would be a similar shape. And the main problem pro here that, that I still see is the price and the button. So the button once again could be a little bit wider and actually could be a lot wider. And we can leave the color for now, but the text is again not in the center. But let's see what happens if we decrease the height. Yeah, it works a little bit better now. So let's leave the color for now. Let's leave the, the arrow because it actually makes a little bit of sense. But I'm gonna round it still. And instead of a gradient here, I'm just gonna make it lighter so, so it's more visible. And especially the more contrast with uh, the buy button. 
But well, anyway, let's just uh, move the button a little bit lower. And then uh, let's increase the font size and actually make it bolder. So for, for starters, we can try with uh, 40. Because this is the important part. This is what people will be looking for. They need to know the price. They want to read some of the stuff, but they need to know the price. So if we have this particular space over here, you could use the same space to, to actually figure out where the price should be. And then obviously we can take all of this and group it and then move it a little higher so it's more aligned with the image here. So yeah, just a couple of simple changes. Let's uh, copy the properties of this text here and paste them here. Okay, and I'm not gonna do the footer here, but you can use very similar principles. But one thing that I want to stress in, especially in those uh, little boxes here, is uh, the spacing between the objects. So first of all, we can also round them a little bit. If you don't like rounded corners, it should, you still should consider using like four or maybe even two. But I think that eight is a really good number because they're not super rounded. They're pretty good to, to make proper alignments. But at the same time, that makes the design and the layout a little bit friendlier. So one thing to do here is the side spacing. Because as you can see, especially with the letter E here, it nearly touches the side of, uh, of the box. So you can also use that same principle of figuring out the space between the boxes and it's 29 now instead of 26. So that is also something that you should definitely look for and correct. So when you use 26 as the spaces, it should be 26 or 24, 32, and 40. But let's assume that 29 is uh, the right choice here. So just create a box like this, like a helping guide, and then have the text wrap around between those boxes. And that's fine if it doesn't touch the boxes, because in some cases it will. I mean, in some cases when there is like a particular word length, it's going to touch the boxes and then you'll know that you have enough space for, for it to fit nicely. And we don't really have that problem here, but the text is also centered in the same way. So doing it just in case, because later in the design you might end up skipping something like this and then pasting a new text and it's going to break. And to make it a little bit more interesting, you can actually take those photos of people and place them halfway outside of the box. That way it's gonna be actually easier to align because if all of that content here is center aligned, then you can keep that content center aligned as well. So just like that, just center align it and align it to each other. So the main problem that is left here is that still those boxes look a little bit too similar to each other. So what you can do is actually decrease the contrast of the names because they're not really that important, it's more what they say. And then you can change the color of the headphones themselves, the headphone names. So that way it's gonna be a little bit clearer when you look at it. It's gonna have a little bit more hierarchy and a little bit more sense. And if you used some specific spacings here, I haven't, I just kind of eyed it, but let's assume that it's 48 to the bounding box, just uh, to be quicker. So then do 48 to the bounding box here as well. Okay, and yeah, the same thing here. The, I'm not gonna modify this, but you could try to modify it yourself. So one thing is that there's still not enough space on the sides of the button. There sh it should be like a little bit wider. Then the font could be bolder and 
this text here should never be centered. Like if there's an input box, don't put center text in them because it's gonna make it a little bit harder to read. So like a little bit of spacing on the side but completely left aligned with just the padding. And then things like that should probably be placed either horizontally or aligned to the same edge because uh, we're reading from le left to right so it's just a lot easier to kind of read them as a column. So yeah, just really a couple of very small changes and it's already looking better, but we can actually try to, to see what happens if we paste the same gradient from the bottom to the top. And yeah, it's still a little bit better so we can even try the same uh, blurred image, but just to keep it like a little bit shaded and a little bit hidden so it doesn't take all the attention and I'm gonna actually decrease the opacity a little bit. So yeah, this is uh, like a couple of very simple changes uh, that that you can make to, to make a difference in the landing page. But it's a really good start and I know that you're just starting out so um, great work for a starting project and with just a couple of those little changes uh, I think you're on the right way. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time. Cheers.